Hello and welcome to the July 2023 Sky Report. I'm Patrick So. Venus continues to dominate the evening sky soon after sunset. This picture was taken last month showing the Moon, Venus, Mars and the Astronomer's Monument at Griffith Observatory. On the first day of summer, the Moon, Venus and Mars were fairly close together, forming a right-angled triangle to the west. Using our video camera, we captured this beautiful celestial arrangement. The faint glow on the unlit side of the Moon is caused by the reflection of sunlight off the Earth's surface. This phenomenon is known as Earthshine. On the evening of July 8th, you can spot Venus and Mars low to the west as the sky darkens. Both planets are in the constellation Leo the Lion. The brightest star in Leo is Regulus, the lion's heart, located at the base of a pattern of stars that looks like a backwards question mark. This pattern, known as the sickle, makes up the head and forequarters of Leo the Lion. Over the next few evenings, watch as Mars approaches Regulus. For the best observation of Mars and Regulus, use binoculars to locate the celestial pair. On the 9th, Mars is about three quarters of a degree from Regulus. Mars is lined up between Regulus and Eta Leonis. On the 10th, Mars is three quarters of a degree north of Regulus. On the next evening, Mars begins to increase its separation from Regulus and Venus. Throughout this month, Venus will continue to descend towards the horizon as it makes its way towards the bright glare of the sun to eventually emerge in the morning sky. Through a telescope, Venus appears as a wide crescent. These images of Venus were taken by an amateur astronomer last month. Currently, Venus is approaching Earth on its inside track orbit. Venus's thinning crescent will grow from 33 to 51 arc minutes in size during the month. Mars, on the other hand, is nearly fully illuminated. It's about 339 million kilometers from Earth on the 9th. Its remoteness makes it challenging to image telescopically. The celestial dance of the planets continues. On the evening of the 19th, the thin, waxing crescent moon joins Venus and Mars. Close to the horizon is Mercury. A pair of binoculars is needed to see it. Looking south in the evening, the spring constellation Virgo the Maiden is in the southwest, with Libra the Scales trailing not too far behind. Taking center stage to the south is Scorpius the Scorpion. Its brightest star Antares reaches a maximum altitude of 29 degrees due south, as seen from Los Angeles. Sagittarius the Archer is east of Scorpius. Its brightest stars form the pattern of a teapot. High above the southeast horizon is the bright star Altar in the constellation Aquila the Eagle. At this time of year, the brightest portion of the Milky Way is present. Unfortunately, the Milky Way is marred by light pollution emanating from urban and suburban areas. Only from areas far from city lights can the full glory of the Milky Way be witnessed. The faint band of light of our galaxy arches downwards from Aquila towards Sagittarius and Scorpius. Our telescope demonstrator, Anthony Perkett, captured this stunning time exposure image of the Milky Way from Ghost Ranch, New Mexico. The sky brightness at this location registered as a class 2 on the Borto scale, which rates sky conditions on a scale of 1 to 9, with 9 representing inner city skies and 1 representing exceptionally dark skies. This particular site was close to perfect. Here is the same image with labels for the stars and planets for comparison with the computer-generated chart. In the morning sky, our solar system's two largest planets have shifted westward since last month. Saturn is located due south in the faint constellation Aquarius the Water Bearer. Brilliant Jupiter is high in the southeast in the constellation Aries the Ram, rising as early as 1 a.m. Our moon phases this month. Full moon is the third, last quarter is the ninth, new moon is the 17th, and first quarter is the 25th. And that's all for this month's Sky Report. Until next time, cheerio!